and the family was young and her mother raised the children in the working class Brisbane suburb of Anala. Jackie left school at age 15 to work as a typist to help support the family. She worked her way up through various jobs, got herself to university and is now a highly respected historian, author and consultant. So what is the experience of Indigenous Australians like Jackie who are closing the gap? Record numbers of Indigenous students are graduating from university, Indigenous businesses are winning rich contracts and in some places community leaders are taking charge to turn around a legacy of violence and crime. As the ABC's Indigenous Affairs editor Stan Grant reports, these types of success stories are being dubbed the quiet revolution and a warning this story contains images of a deceased person. I used to be angry, resentful and unfortunately I had hatred connected to me over all those years. But I learned something really simple. Um, there's some humility and you have to swallow a bit of pride in it. And the more I see the young ones start to grow, I feel like I'm, I'm growing with them. Shane Phillips beats the sunrise every morning. He is in a fight for the future of his people. He puts young Indigenous kids through their paces getting them fit and focused. The message is simple. Pride in who you are and hard work equals success. For thousands of years, our people were all succeeding. These kids, we're trying to show them that's what's really valuable to you. Shane's T-shirt says it all. Hard as a rock, trained at the block. Come on, step it up, step it up, do it. Step up to it. The block is what Aboriginal people call the inner Sydney suburb of Redfern. It is a place with a long and hard history. Just over a decade ago, this place exploded. The violence is believed to have been triggered by the death on Sunday morning of Thomas Hickey. There had long been trouble, yeah. an uneasy relationship between local cops and the indigenous community. Pick it up a bit. Oh, come on. Now the police work with people like Shane Phillips to run this boxing program. When we first started the program, we, we, um, we were struggling. It's three months into our program starting, kids started to see their sense of worth and their value and their families started to see them, the value and how strong our people really were. We had an 82% drop in robberies. The recidivism rates in other places, and we're seeing it, it's going up, Redfern and around this area, it's going down. Um, the sense of worth is lifting. <laughs> And we are seeing that sense of self-worth increasingly in education. We've got a range of students that have come through many of our degree programs. Um, we had six students in medicine graduate a couple of years back and then the next year we had eight students. So, you know, the numbers are getting bigger. Reuben Bolt, like Shane Phillips, was raised in a strong Indigenous community. His simple ambition, finish high school. So Reuben, when you were at university, or when you were at high school, did you ever imagine the day that you'd be sitting here and you'd be Dr Reuben Bolt? Would never have thought that. Never. Reuben Bolt now runs the Nurugili Centre at the University of New South Wales. He guides other students on the same journey he's taken. And it's paying off. The retention rate of Indigenous students at UNSW is now higher than that of their non-Indigenous peers. When I came to this university more than 30 years ago, there were very few Indigenous students, probably count them on two hands, but now more than 300 come here and they're graduating more doctors and lawyers and architects and engineers than ever before. It's part of a revolution really happening on campuses right across the country. There are more than 30,000 Indigenous graduates. When do we start to talk about success rather than failure? Mm. It's when we change the narrative. The narrative right now focuses on disadvantage. Images like these we have become far too used to on our television screens. By every measure, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders are the poorest in Australia, with the overall worst health, housing, employment and education outcomes. Yet statistics need not be destiny. The Prime Minister's closing the gap speech focusing on Indigenous success. The data tells us there is no employment gap no employment gap between Indigenous Australians and non-Indigenous Australians with a university degree. Reminder, 
of the central importance of education. We're looking at deficit all the time and we, and we condition our children to it and we've got to stop that because those are the shackles that held us back, you know. So for here, all we're doing is we're breaking the shackles. The government doesn't use the word marginalisation, they use the word disadvantage. And if they use the word marginalisation, it means somebody's doing the marginalising. Whereas if it's disadvantage, you're actually born into it. So then it's nobody's fault. <laughs> no one could call Troy Ruggless disadvantaged, not by anyone's standards. Well, I grew up in Housing Commission. My grandfather's family was from the stolen generation. Half of his family, we don't know who they are. We've never seen them. Again, you know, they were taken away and that was it. Troy created the company PSG Holdings. Its motto is achieving reconciliation through business. What started six years ago as a cleaning business, now tenders for construction projects, has a list of government clients and turns over $30 million a year, with offices around the country employing over 150 staff, more than a quarter of them Indigenous. Great. Thanks, Nath. How do you create a culture of success amongst Indigenous people? We just have to change our thinking. We have to get out there and have a go. Um, when provided with an opportunity, give it 110%. Make sure you succeed with that opportunity. Your children will see this success and then they'll, they'll want to want to follow in your footsteps. Oh, you know, this cycle of, of you know, housing, commission, living and, and, and all the rest of this sort of where we're stuck, we feel like we're stuck. We need to break that cycle and become responsible and independent and be able to, it gives you choice. Troy's success does not mean he forgets the struggle of others, but he is part of a rising Aboriginal middle class, a first generation of Aboriginal millionaires. It's a story overlooked. Aboriginal people are a quarter of the prison population, but there are many more who have graduated university. I never forget because we know it's what happened was wrong. You know, and all our families, most families are affected, the stolen generation, um, and bad things happen. Troy Ruggless has big ambitions. Right now, his company is bidding for a defence deal that could be the biggest ever signed with an Indigenous company. Hopefully we can be the pioneers of, of a business that eventually is listed on the stock exchange. That's my goal, to to get up to that sort of level, that high corporate level, and, um, yeah, the that'd big be bucks. great. The big bucks, that'd be great. <laughs> you want the big yeah, bucks? Yeah, the big bucks. <laughs> That's it for tonight. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Good night.